Class is in session. Let's begin with the four major numbers. We've got a case study over here, husband and wife. We're just looking at husband's income. Wife is not even included in the income. I would say this, one thing to consider, and this is what this person is considering. This will not typically happen overnight, but over time, I would highly consider you get spouse's income on board that you guys combine incomes into one central location, preferably one checking account that's connected to your debt tool, the home equity line of credit, the personal line of credit, the business line of credit, wherever it may be. When you have all income sources going to one location, it does create more efficiency. It does improve the strategy long term. But I totally understand when there's one spouse watching all the content, the other one is not, not that involved. So what this person has to do, you, the one that's watching, where your spouse is not, say, on board or, or wants to keep their income separate, we just need to produce results. 90 plus percent of the time, once we bring results to the table, hey babe, car's paid off, credit card's paid off. Hey, this is paid off. Hey, this is paid off. When we start showing a behavioral shift in the whole economics of your household, then they start to say, oh, oh, that's nice. Oh, oh, that's, oh, that's done. Oh, okay. Oh. Now they want to get on, because now you can say, hey, if you were to get involved, whether you give a half of your paycheck, 25% of your paycheck, it's going to increase my results by X dollar amount. If you're, you're able to present facts, right? Present the details, present results. That's gonna help spouse get on board. But if we try to convince them, sell them, persuade them, uh, you know, all these different things, typically doesn't work on women. Men, typically yes, but most women don't get convinced or persuaded right away. We kind of have to ease them into it, right? We have to show the results, right? We have to present things in a way that matter to them, frame the conversation in a way that matters to your spouse more than the numbers itself. Sometimes it's not the numbers that's gonna convince spouse. Sometimes it's what comes of it. Hey, I'm gonna be able to spend more time with the kids. Hey, I'm gonna be able to take the kids to school and you can take two days off now that these two cars are paid off and the credit cards are done, I don't have to work 10 extra hours a week overtime. I can dial that down to 40, 50 hour weeks, which means I'll have more time to spend with you on the weekends. When we're able to craft that conversation away, I'm telling you, it's going to be a game changer for your personal finances and just, you know, overall how you go to sleep at night. Okay. So, Four major numbers on the board. We're dealing with 7,215.89 bi-weekly. That's broken down into 3607.94 net paycheck. Okay. Total expenses are 4,681.96. We have a healthy cash flow out the gate. This is prior to even doing velocity banking. Okay. Another key gem takeaway before you even start velocity banking, before you get into it, okay. There's something called pregame work. I came up with this idea of velocity banking pregame work. There's so much content out there showing the strategy itself and how powerful it can be when implemented. Yet, there are tons of people who, who go right into it with the wrong tool, too high of an interest rate on line of credit. They don't know the full mechanics. They start making mistakes. They end up going into more debt than what they expected because we didn't handle the pregame work, the foundation building. So there are 10 plus steps, right? I have a playlist called Velocity Banking Pregame Work. I think there's about 10 or 11 videos in there that you can watch and it's going to highlight all of the pregame work that you can do without even introducing Velocity Banking. We're gonna pay down debt, we're gonna increase credit score, increase your cash flow, reduce expenses, get your mindset right, get everything perfectly calibrated for this particular method. You're able to do, and there's so many scenarios where we do all that pregame work and then we may not even need to introduce Velocity Bank because of how much we were able to do with the foundation that sometimes we can skip over Velocity Banking right into Infinite Banking. Sometimes that's the case, right? 
or maybe it's a combination, velocity banking and banking together, right? Or maybe it's none of the two. Maybe it's just straight start a business, create more income. No velocity, totally fine. Maybe just using credit cards, right? So another big gem there. Total debt, 235,000. Here's our debt tool, our main debt tool. We have a home equity line of credit, second position, $50,000. 8.25% is the interest rate. Here is the breakdown of four debts outside of the mortgage, four debts that we're dealing with, two credit cards, two loans, right? This is the balances owed. Here are the monthly payments. Here are the interest rates. And then these numbers right here are the cash flow index scores. If you do not know what the cash flow index formula is, all I am doing is taking the balance of a debt and dividing it by the monthly minimum payment and you get a score. The lower that score is, the more attractive it is to pay off that debt, okay? In the debt snowball world, if we were to tackle these debts in the form of debt snowball, we would start with lowest debt to highest debt. So it'd be 4,000, the 95, the 14, and then the 42. That's how that would work. In cash flow index, it has you skipping over the smallest debt because it got a 39.21. And we're going right here to the 95 at 21.92. Then it has you going to 33.33, 14,000. Then it has you coming over to the highest debt, 42,000. And then finishing it off with the smallest debt, 39.21. That's kind of weird, right? But from a cash flow perspective, you would gain more cash flow faster without velocity banking. If you were to take this 253393 instead of sending it to this 4000, cash flow index would say send it here first. If you went in this order, right? 9500, then jump over to the 14, then go to 42, then end at 4000, you'll get out of debt faster than debt snowball. The only argument or, or leverage that debt snowball has is the phil philosophical perspective, not necessarily a mathematical one, but the philosophical perspective that the average person will build more momentum. They'll stick with the plan longer by starting with the smallest debt and working your way up, creating that snowball effect. Okay. If we were doing debt avalanche, the first debt that we would tackle would be the credit card for the 14,000 because it focuses on highest interest cost, right? So highest interest cost, debt avalanche, that one first, then the 42K, then the smallest debt, four grand, and then ending at the loan for 9,500. That, in my opinion, is the slowest way, right? So when we look at cash flow index formula, it is a great great measurement stick to determine how you will apply velocity banking. So when you run cash flow index formula, this gives you a guideline, not necessarily law, but a guideline in my opinion as to how we will do velocity banking. So first step, know your numbers, got that. Second, what's our debt tool? The HELOC, second position, 50 grand, 8.25%. Third, cash flow index formula, Let's analyze the debts, how and which ones are we going to go after first. Now we need to determine our chunk range. What's our chunk range, students? How do we develop this? How do we come up with it? So what I do is I take the credit limit of the line of credit that we're dealing with, and I times that by 66%, okay? So that is what I call my leverage rules, and then we have leverage capacity, okay? Everybody's leverage capacity will be different, but the leverage rules should be a strong, consistent guideline. No matter how much income I'm dealing with, no matter how much cash flow I'm dealing with, I'm always following my leverage rules. What are the leverage rules? We got two very, very important rules within leverage. 66% of the line of credit or two thirds, you can say 67% or 66, whichever number you feel most comfortable with. So it's either two thirds or 66%, right? Then that would number would be 33,000 right here. 
off of 50K. And then we take cash flow current, not what you're going to have, cash flow current, what we're currently at before starting velocity banking, cash flow times 12. What does that equal? 30,407.16. This is picture perfect. Look how the cash flow in correlation to how much debt we're leveraging is about 12 months of future cash flow. So all Velocity Banking is doing at the end of the day is what debt snowball or making extra payments does in a whole year. It is taking all those extra payments that we would do over a 12 month period and we're bringing all that to the very first month. That's it. Pretty simple. And there's some nuance, some variation in that. We'll get into it. But now we have our chunk range. Anywhere from 30,407.16 to as high as 33,000. Look how picture perfect that is. Now, if this person had a $500,000 home equity line of credit, the gap just widened massively. And this is where we need to display some responsibility. And this is where leverage capacity would come into play. For example, if we had a $500,000 home equity line of credit, 66% of 500 grand is 333,000. And their cash flow was only 30,407 per year. So to help you decide, should I chunk 333,000 just because I have a HELOC for $500,000? Yes, no, maybe so, I don't know, right? My answer every time I'm working with a client is, I don't know, let's run the numbers first and let's look at our rules, okay? So one of the ways to determine your capacity to leverage that 333,000 is you ask yourself this mathematical question, which is we take our current cash flow, 2,533.93, right? divide it by 66% of the line of credit. So 333,000 divided by 2533.93. So if you were to chunk $333,000 and you have cash flow today of 2,533, you are effectively mathematically leveraging 131.41 months of cash flow, of future cash flow. Break that down by 12. You are leveraging about 11 years of future cash flow. Stop right there. Think about it to yourself. Am I willing to risk 11 years of future cash flow to achieve a particular result? Chances are, if we have a $500,000 line of credit open and available, and you're considering making a chunk of 333,000, more than likely that's for an investment, maybe not so much debt elimination, or it could be a combination of both, right? So you have to ask yourself, am I willing to put 11 years of future cash flow at risk? That is a lot that we're putting at risk. Would you agree? All right, comment below. Would you agree? Yeah, putting 11 years of my future cash flow at risk, if this goes south, if this investment goes wrong, I invest $333,000, right? Then I'm going to I'm going to set myself back 10 years from progress. Essentially, right? Like you can we we can foresee that. With velocity banking, no matter what you do in velocity banking, there's always a level of risk. How do we mathematically reduce the risk according to our personal capacity to handle that debt? On average, it's typically 12 months of future cash flow, right? And you can be even more conservative by doing what's called micro chunking. You can chunk every three to six months of future cash flow, speeding it up in the present, right? So when you do micro chunking, you're able to control the amount of interest you pay on your debt tool, reduce it dramatically, and you reduce the risk dramatically. The results on average will be faster than the extra payments because 
you are simply taking what that snowball extra payments would have done over that six month period of time and you're fast forwarding it to the first month today, right? So coming back, I'm gonna delete this little zero here, right? We're dealing with a $50,000 credit line. So far, we know our numbers, we know our debt tool. We know what debts to attack, in which order, according to cash flow index formula, we have our chunk range. In addition to our main debt tool, we also have a 0% credit card for 18 months with a 3% balance transfer fee with a $25,000 credit limit that we could also use for debt elimination. The last thing to have clarity with who we're dealing with on the whiteboard here and for yourself, no matter what videos you're watching on YouTube, whether it be mine, Christy, uh, Conajay, Quack Brothers, whomever, as it relates to the velocity banking concept, you yourself, before you get convinced by me, persuaded by me, sold by me, or content creators like me, please take the time to really sit and decide what is my goal with this strategy? What would I like this concept, this method, what these gurus are teaching me, what would I like it to do for my household, right? And in the velocity banking world, there's pretty much two options. Either I wanna use a velocity banking concept to eliminate debt faster, or I want to use a velocity banking concept to increase income, okay? And third option is both, right? You wanna increase income and you wanna eliminate some debt. So we can do a combination of both, right? And I'll, we can maybe spend some time on that. I can show you what that could potentially look like, all right? So we've got our framework, we've got the context. Now let's look at daily application, what we, what we decide to do together, right? So with myself and the client, we decided together do the chunk of exactly 66%, 33,000, and we're going to pay off debts pretty much in the order of cash flow index with a little variance, okay? And I'm gonna tell you, and I'll, I'll share why. I feel this way. So of the 33,000, right, and I'll map this out together. We'll, we'll stick with the calculator. I instructed the client, we're gonna go ahead and pay off the 9,500. We're going to skip, right, that small debt. We're gonna go to that 33.33, 14,000, right? Skipping the smallest debt, right? According to cash flow index, the next debt I should tackle would be the bigger debt for the 42,000, 37.94. Now, here's where my nuance comes in and I kind of revert back to debt snowball just a little bit. And I told the client, I said, look, whatever we chunk at this point, at this debt, it doesn't pay it off, right? And again, kind of leaning on that psychological piece there, momentum, performance, dealing with a person here, not a robot or a spreadsheet, I'm dealing with a person. So I'm also factoring in the human factor here human error, that if I can get the client to pay the 95 off the 14 and the four grand, I can say, hey, that's three debts paid off. That's three payments off your list. That is a big, big, big confidence boost. So I'm gonna skip over that last debt, even though cash flow index told me to go after it, over the smallest debt. So that's 27,500, three debts gone, right? What do we get? 420 plus 102 plus 433, 20. So that is a cash flow gain guaranteed $955.20. Not bad at all. Okay, well, I'm still not quite at 33,000 just yet. So what would I do with that? 33,000 minus 27,5. You're left with $5,500. Yes, now apply it here, right? So instead of applying 9,500 toward here, as cash flow index would have me do, I'm going to simply do 5,500 toward that loan principal. So 5,500, 42,429.45 minus 5,500 would bring the balance down to 36,929.45. That's one option. Or to be even, to create even more velocity with the HELOC, all right? These are these are options. So you, you can you can play with this. Ultimately, I think they produce the same result. If 
pretty much the same, but I think having that initial boost with the line of credit, considering that this particular debt, I'm not gonna pay it off either, either way. So what if I took a portion of the, our chunk, which was the $5,500 number, and let's say we took that 5,500 of debt from our HELOC and actually made the payment for the month that we're in. We're looking at August, 2024, right? What if we just satisfied the payment and then the rest went to principal? So 5,500 minus 1,118, 12, right? So then 4,381.88 would go towards principal. The other 1,118.12 satisfied the payment for August, right? Satisfied the payment, which means that my expenses for the month of August are gonna be $1,118.12 less coming out of the HELOC. So I have this temporary cash flow boost from my normal income and, and expenses and cash flow. Did you see that? Do you see the difference there? So we could either send 5,500 and still make the 1,118.12. So technically you're sending more money to that loan for the month of August. So you can do both, right? Uh, you'll definitely pay it off faster because you technically sent more money, right? But for the sake of dealing with a newbie in Velocity Banking, sometimes what I like to do is have the client use part of our chunk to actually satisfy the payment only when we're dealing with a debt that we're not actually paying off in full with our chunk. So, so far, our first chunk, 33 grand, we paid off three debts for sure. That means that very same month, especially if we're dealing at the beginning of the month, I received that cash flow now, 955, 20 guaranteed, all right? So somewhere around 37,000 and some change is, is what we'll be at on the loan, right? I made the payment. I no longer have that payment. Now, here's what we do. Velocity Banking. I'm going to take you back in time as we're live right now. It's August 27th. I'm going to take you back in time. Take you when the first day we actually start Velocity Banking, right? And I'm going to show you how statement cycles typically work as it relates to our credit cards and HELOCs and that sort of thing. And we're going to go day by day and try to map out the estimated interest cost of what we're dealing with, right? So the way the paychecks are set up for this person we're getting paid on August 2nd. We're getting paid on August 16th. We're getting paid on August 30th. August happens to be a three paycheck month. So that's gonna give us another boost of 3607.94. Technically for the month of August, our income was not 7,215.89. It was 7,215.89 plus 3607.94. Not bad, all right? So we got the chunk money coming out on the same day I get paid. This is another standard guideline, not necessarily a law, but I'd say a very, very healthy standard guideline. The best time to make your chunk payment, whether it's from a line of credit, PLOC, HELOC, whatever it may be, all in one, first lien, second lien, whichever it is, the most efficient day to make a chunk payment is the day you have the most money in your bank account. When is the day or days in a month where you have the most amount of money in your bank accounts? Typically the day you get paid. In this case, we have three opportunities in the month of August to make our chunk. Now, obviously the sooner the better, no doubt. So keep that in mind. The sooner the better in terms of making my first chunk, and if I'm trying to be efficient, setting up my base and foundation, all the pregame work done, great. Then we can actually set a scheduled date, that date being the day you get paid. In this case, it's August 2nd. That's the day we're going to get paid, right? To make our first chunk payment. So 33 grand came out of the checking account, right? Let me do my, my famous triangle, right? We got the checking here, the HELOC here, and our bills are debts there okay so income 
comes in, right? Boom, lands in your checking account. Before you spend any dollar of that income, before you spend a single dollar, you're gonna move money out of your HELOC to your checking account. That would be our chunk. That 33 grand, that's gonna be used to pay our debts that we're gonna eliminate. The three and then partial of the fourth. All, 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 all of it. Hear me clearly, please. Some of you missed this step. This is vital. Some of you think you're doing velocity banking. I talked to so many of you. I'm like, uh, inefficiency, inefficiency, inefficiency. Nope, not doing it correctly. Nope, not doing it correctly. I'm constantly running a clinic over here on my YouTube channel. And I think that's because there's a lot of misinformation online. And you know, uh, that's, the, that's the downside of learning online, okay? You're gonna, deal, you're gonna have to deal with that. So you're gonna have to take that extra time to really study, right? And I wanna do my best to never provide misinformation or lead you astray. So I try not to leave out details, which is why my videos are so darn long because I'm trying to cover all of the details. And even then I may miss some, but I'm trying to make sure you're fully equipped before you go into this thing, right? So all of that income, where does it go? It's gotta go into the HELOC. It immediately satisfies whatever the payment would have been typically on that HELOC. So no payment will register. By the time the payment does register, it was already satisfied. That is why we do that. That's one key factor. Second is interest costs. The moment we pull 33 out, you're immediately getting charged interest. Now you can delay or reduce, I should say, that interest on 8.25%. You can reduce that by simply sending all of your income right into the HELOC the same day before midnight of that day. So August 2nd, 33 grand came out, boom. 360794 went in. Same day, that would mean I'm gonna get charged interest on 29,392.06 at 8.25% as opposed to 33,000 at 8.25%. It doesn't make a huge difference but over a long period of time, it definitely makes a difference, right? These are, these are multiple days that we're getting charged interest that we could reduce that number by. Pretty powerful, okay? So 33 grand, pay the debts. Where did the debts go? They're now in the HELOC. So question for you, when I get a debt tool, here's what the naysayers say, is that you're basically going into more debt. You're getting more debt to pay more debt. No, we are not. Mathematically, we are not doing that, right? If I have a $50,000 line of credit and I owe $235,540, do I now owe $285,000 of debt? No, because I have not used the 50 grand yet. Now, if I take the 33 grand and I pay off three debts in a partial of the fourth, how much debt do I still owe? $235,540, nothing changed, not yet. So I did not increase debt, I did not decrease debt. All I did was move it from one location to another, and I'm going to pay less interest. I'm going to have more of my dollars work stronger for me, which eliminates the debt. It's a game of interest. That's what it is. That's how we get speed. Because if all the numbers are the same, it's a matter of who pays more interest. If all the numbers are the same, same ingredients, same person, same discipline, same mindset, same everything, the only difference is who pays more interest. That's it, it's a game of interest. So I moved the debts into the HELOC. My income is in the HELOC. Now I need to pay bills. Now for the month of August, our expenses went from 4681.96 down to 2608.64. Why? Well, I'm no longer paying 955.20. And for the month of August, I don't make that payment of 1,118.12, right? For that, that month, okay? That's what happened. So you add that. 1,118.12, add the 955.20, minus it from 4681.96, you should get that number, 2608.64. Okay, so now, it's August 2nd. Now, here's where I made an intentional error. On August 2nd, I'm illustrating us pulling out $1,408.64 at once, right? In the actual application of Velocity Banking, ideally, you wanna withdraw money especially as a beginner, every three to five days. Another guideline, every three to five days, 
to accommodate any expenses over the next three to five days. And so you'll find yourself pulling money out of the HELOC at least five to six times a month on average, especially if you're bi-weekly. Okay? And there's ways to strategically align your bills as far away from the due date as possible and, and money in from money out. Right? It, it's possible. I'm not going to show that right now because I want to just give you the, the, the basics, the principles, foundation. Once you get the foundation, you can then add, 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 add more enhancers, what I like to call them. Right. So we got income went in, reduced the balance 29,392.06. Okay. And then expenses came out 1,040864. Of the 26,0864 of expenses, 1,200 of that can be run on a credit card. So outside of what's shown here, we have another credit card, zero balance, nothing owed, where we can run bills on a card, get 2% cash back. Now, if we display proper discipline, my friend, okay, as long as you have proper discipline and can track the expenses you're running on credit cards to pay bills, to get cash back rewards, and to reduce your borrowing costs on the home equity line of credit, as long as you have discipline and good tracking, I'm all for it. Do it. Now, if we assumed that we were going to run $1,200 on a credit card to run your bills every single month and pay it off in full to avoid interest, but at the end of the month, you ran $1,800 on the card. We now have to reflect and see, hey, wait a minute. We only allocated for $1,200. You told me your expenses were this much, but now we're running $1,800 on the credit card. You increased your expenses by $600. You decreased your cash flow by $600. You did nothing. It did not help you to add that specific enhancer of a credit card to run bills, to get the cash back rewards, to reduce interest on your HELOC. Whatever you did with that 1800 got got destroyed by the simple fact that you spent 600 more dollars. Even though you got cash back rewards, even though 18 more hundred dollars stayed in the credit card for 25, 28 days, whatever it was, you still spent 600 more dollars. That's not efficient, right? So that's taking us in the wrong direction, right? So that's a gem there. Take that for what it's worth. Moving right along, this person displays discipline. We're gonna run bills on a card, the same $1,200 every single month. We're getting 2% cash back, we're getting $24. That's 24 less dollars every single month that's coming out of the HELOC to pay that credit card off. So instead of paying $1,200, we reduced our cost of living by $24 every single month moving forward. Not bad, okay? That earns you a few dollars in savings and interest, which means more cash flow. More cash flow means I get out of debt faster. Even if it's a dollar, two dollars, three dollars, I still get out of debt faster, right? And you compound that over the amount of time it takes us to get out of debt. It, it creates massive results, right? Pretty powerful. So that's the breakdown of the 260864. 140864 of it is cash bills. The 1200 is bills that can be paid with a credit card, right? So now 140864 came out, it's August 2nd, right? Intentional error. We're at 30,870. Times that by 13 days, all the way till we get to the 16th, right? So you count August 2nd, let me just make sure I count it, right? August 2nd to the third, one day, right? So one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yes. So I did it right. So 13 days, right? It's technically more days, but in terms of charged interest days, it's 13 days between the end of August 2nd to the day, August 16th, but without calculating August 16th, because on that day income comes in. So you have to readjust what that new interest will be. So for 13 days, owing $30,870, I will pay $90.50. Now, here's where a lot of people that disagree with Velocity Banking, when they show their um, calculations, where they make errors sometimes. The $90.50 daily interest, right, that's getting charged to the HELOC, I'm not getting charged on August 16th, $90.50. That doesn't get charged until the first statement due date which would be 
September 2nd, right? Or September 1st, 28 days later. That's when the interest gets charged to the HELOC, right? So that's important because if the 9050 got charged on the 16th, technically you'll end up paying more interest, right? Because now that's part of the balance. So that's important. That, that's a game changer. That changes things up. So we got $90.50 for 13 days. It's now August 16th. What happened? Income came in. 360794 brings the balance down to 27192.76. Principal. 100% of my paycheck. Principal. This is why I tell you guys all the time. Dump all your income in to the line because it'll be 100% principal on that day. If you wait, not only did you pay more interest, but some of that, right, won't won't be 100% principal anymore, right? Because you waited, because you paid a bill and then you sent the rest into the line. In that case, all you're doing is extra payments, my friend. You're not really doing velocity banking, right? That's gonna be key for a lot of you here. So balance is at 27,192.76. So count August 16th to the 30th, another 13 days. Again, without counting the 30th, right? Notice how the interest is different now. The balance is going down. So for the first 13 days, it was $90.50. The next 13 days of the month of August, it's $79.90, all right? And to close out the cycle, August 30th, 31st, one day, September 1st, right? Two days on the 30th, I get paid 360.794. Brings the balance down, 23,584.82, times that by two days of 8.25% on this new balance owed, $10.66. So add these three numbers. You pay roughly, more or less, about $181.06. Let me ask you a question. Did I pay new interest or was this pre-existing interest I was going to pay Anyways, this 18106, this is another error I think some people make that don't agree with velocity banking, is they make they they inform us that we're paying more interest. Well, if we're doing it the way that just was described here, I'm not paying more interest, I'm paying interest I was already going to pay over here at 29.99, at 17.4, at 14.99 at 20.91, it's the same interest. It's just now way less. 181.06 is probably in that 420 alone, right? So for the month of August, I pay $181.06 in interest and I had 100% of my income principal pay down the initial chunk of 33 grand, okay? <clears throat> so now we move to the next month. September will be just two paychecks. So we had a nice little boost in August. It was a three paycheck month. I think that happens twice a year for many of you that are bi-weekly. So September 13th and September 27th are our next two paydays. Notice how I'm showing expenses at 380864. Why is that? Because I'm including August credit card bills. Remember how we ran $1,200 on the card? Okay, well, well that card is not gonna be owed until September, right? So what ends up happening, this is what gives Velocity Banking another boost, is not only are we efficiently relocating high interest debt to a lower interest rate environment, not only are we doing that, we're also dumping all our income into that new location where our debt is at and our income is reducing the daily interest that it gets charged. In addition, in addition, we're prolonging our expenses. So now there's a 30, roughly 30 day lag between when I go grocery shopping and fill my tank and pay for my subscriptions, and pay for my bills. It's like a 30 day lag, right? So August, we create our first lag month where $1,200 is lagging behind as time goes on. So now we're in September, 1200 is due for August. In September, I run another 12. It won't be due in September, it'll be due in October. It creates this healthy lag, which creates more cash flow for the person doing velocity banking, which helps them pay off their debt faster. That alone gives you an extra couple months ahead of extra payments over the long run. Not bad. Okay, another little gem there. Comment below if you're getting a lot of value from this. 
Let me know if I'm on the right page, if I'm moving at a nice, healthy pace for you, especially those of you who are listening that are bi-weekly, right? So September 13th, we now owe $27,574.52 on the line, right? Because at the end of August, another intentional error I created for uh, to just allow the results to look less, right? But it'll actually be better. So we end August with a balance of 23,584.82. Add 181.06 to that balance. You're now in September. Moving forward, you're getting charged interest at that new amount, right? What I did was I minused uh, three, I added 3,80864 to the 23,584.82 number and the 181.06. That should you should get twenty seven thousand five seventy four five two minus income thirty six oh seven nine four. Here's your balance twenty three thousand nine sixty six five eight. You should times this number by eleven days at eight point two five percent. What I did was I took the higher number just to create like error. So twenty seven thousand five seventy four five two times eight point two five percent divided by 365 times 11 days, you should get that number, 68.55. So for 11 days, September 2nd, right, through up to the 13th, without counting the 13th as a day, we're at $68.55. September 13th, count that day to September 27th, without counting September 27th, you should get 14 days. 360794 on the 27th goes in. So the balance is at 20,35864, right? Times that 14 days, you should get 64.42, another four more days, and you should get $18.40. I already took expenses out at the very top of the month, even though that's not what's happening, right? And then there's one more key thing that we did with this client is remember this credit card here and 0% for 18 months. I bet some of you were like, when's he going to include that? I very strategically waited, right? Because by now the balance on this loan is somewhere around 36, 37,000 owed with this specific credit card. We can do what's called a convenience check 0% for 18 months, pay a 3% fee. We have a $25,000 credit limit. Could we use the whole 25K? Sure. Would I? Me, no. I think it would violate my rules. It'll violate our capacity to handle that. So if we did 25,000 times two thirds, that's 16,5. We could roughly do anywhere from 16,5. Right, I'm gonna delete my famous triangle here for now. Give me some space to work with. Stay with me, stay with me. Right, I know this is a lot. A $16,500. That's 66% of 25 grand. The other thing that we could do is take the balance of the debt that we're trying to hit divided by two, that's 18.5, and say, okay, our chunk range could be anywhere from 16.5 as high as 18.5. Let's go with the 18.5 times that by 3%, that's 5.55. So for the month of September, when, when this debt is due again, the 1,118.12, to keep my cash flow still high for these two months initial, I could use the debt of this 18.5, right? 18.5 minus 1,118, 17,381.88 satisfies the pay payment for the month of September and ultimately reduces the balance principally by 17,381.88. To be conservative, I'll round the number up 38,000 minus say 18.5. So we'll probably owe somewhere around 19.5 on this loan, right? So it got slashed in September. We owe somewhere around 19.5. And we don't have to make a payment from our income because we use debt to make the payment, right? And we took 20.91% and we put it into a 0% environment and it only cost me 3%, 555. It only cost me 3% to do that. That's gonna be a massive, massive, amount of money and savings. Just from doing that alone, and then we're just going to pay the monthly minimum payment, 18.5, 3%, right? 
and then times 1% of the balance. So our, our cash flow will decrease by 190.55. Our expenses go up by 190.55, right? So for the month of October, well, before I get to October, just closing out September, we had 11 days, $68.55. One paycheck went in on the 13th. A second paycheck went on the 27th. We paid 14 days of interest, right? $64.42. And then you have September 27, 28, 29, 30, right? If I'm not mistaken, 30 days in September. Yep. So four days, 1840. Add those three numbers. We should be at 151.37, the home equity line of credit with me so far. So now 190, mind you, expenses came out, right? And let me just rerun my math. So 23,000. 584.82. That's where I was in August, ending August. I'm going to add my interest, 181.06. Add expenses, 38.0864. Should have gotten that number. Minus income, 36.0794.23966658. That's what you should have gotten. Minus income again, because I already, I already accounted for all the expenses for August. Right, a minus 36, 07, 20,358.64. Add interest, 151.37. So we're at 20,510.01. That's our balance going into October. I know it says the 11th. I'm just going to write for right now 20,000 going into the month of October at the beginning, 20,510.01. Now, looking at expenses, we're at 2608.64. Plus, now I'm going to actually count the uh, the 190 minimum payment. So I'll just I'll round up, say 195. Then I'm going to add now 101876. I'm going to create an intentional error by showing expenses coming out all for the month of October. Overestimate interest costs on purpose. So 20,000, 510. 1-24,431-77. This is helpful when you do this. It lets you know, ideally, where should I be at, according to my four major numbers, on the home equity line of credit. So when you show all income going in and expenses coming out, you'll be able to see, okay, here's the highest balance I should have in that month, and here's the lowest balance I should be at in the month, and I should end somewhere in the middle there. And if that doesn't happen in 30 days, then we get to go back and see, oh, well, Mr. Joan, Mr. Smith, looks like you spent more money. So we have to practice more stewardship and discipline with our actual cost of living, your lifestyle. What does it actually cost to live your lifestyle in the, in the month of August, in the month of September, in the month of October, right? And we map that out very strategically. So 24,431.77 is the highest number it should ever be. In the month of October. And then we're gonna minus income on October 11, 360794, right? So 20,000. October 25th, money goes in again, 360794, 17,000, 215.89. At this point, once you have at least two months of data where you can look at your HELOC statement, look how much interest you paid, look at the first month, look at the second month of doing velocity banking see what the difference is in interest costs. I can make a very healthy estimation here based off history without having to do all the math. 181.06 minus 151.37. On average, my interest cost is decreasing by about 30 bucks without even factoring in the $24 a month that we're getting in cash back rewards. Without even factoring that in, I'm saving about $30 in interest. So I could say for the month of October, our interest costs probably be 120 bucks. That's very, very conservative, right? To, to draw that analysis. Now, in October, we have an interesting opportunity that we could consider another gem. Put this in your notes, another gem. We don't have to what? We don't have to wait all the time when doing velocity banking to hit zero on the line of credit before making your next chunk because there's an opportunity at, at hand right in front of us. If the balance is 19.5, 
in October that's overestimated. And, and we already have an increased cash flow of 955.20 guaranteed. Let's look at it, 955.20 plus pre-existing cash flow to begin with, 2,533.93. We're now at 34.89.13 times 12 is 41,869.56. So we could chunk higher than 33,000. This would be the only case where you can violate my rule is when your cash flow times 12 is higher than 66% of your line of credit. That's when you have permission to chunk a little higher. So if 41K is our new max, let's just say, and we owe 17,215 at the end of October on the HELOC plus 120 bucks in interest, what if we did a chunk of 19,5? Brings me up to 36,000 owed. So our second chunk is only less than three months later, August, September, October. Technically, you could say November, right? So be conservative. So November, you chunk, 19.5, pays off the remaining of that balance, and we get a guaranteed cash flow gain of 1,118.12. You shift the rest of 20.91% to 8.25%, guaranteed savings. No one's going to argue this, right? 20%. It's more than 8.25, and 8.25 is not 8.25 because we don't pay 8.25 when doing Velocity Bank. It's more like half that number probably. November, out the gate, we're back up again, 36,835.89 with a new cash flow of 1,118.12, right? And then you do Velocity Bank, it's going to go even faster to pay off the line of credit. And if we just healthy estimate here take that 955 20 pre-existing cash flow 520 plus pre-existing cash flow 2533 and add 1018 not bad so we're at 460725 in cash flow coming in now so I'll round down say $4600 if, you, if all you did was make extra payments 36,835 divided by what? $4,600. Eight months. Eight months or less. Eight months or less. No velocity banking. Eight months. With velocity banking, less than eight months. To bring the home equity line of credit to zero. Fully paid off. And all four debts are gone. So we could say eight months plus four months. It took us one year or less to eliminate all these debts. Right? And here's the other beauty. We remained liquid the entire time. Unlike making extra payments 100% of your cash flow towards debt elimination, if an issue arises over the next 12 months, where are they gonna dip from? If they don't already have an emergency fund, okay, so they liquidate their emergency funds to handle that emergency. So now no emergency funds, that delays your debt elimination timeline because you have to revamp your emergency funds Whereas over here, with a $50,000 home equity line of credit, I don't even need to touch my emergency or savings funds, right? This could be my replacement. I remain liquid the entire time. If something does happen within 12 months, right? There's always plenty of equity available in the line of credit. Hence, leverage capacity, leverage rules. Super important, gotta follow it, okay? So, that is the end of the lesson today. <laughs>